Black Hills TV welcomes Clay Potter, from Belcruz High School head boys basketball coach. And Clay, hey, thanks for uh, taking time to visit about the basketball season. Yeah, thanks for having me on. You bet you guys did a good job. Finished uh, third in Region 8 uh, with an, a regular season record of 11 and 8. Yeah, we had a pretty successful season. A few of our positives just kind of of game goals that we like to have and kind of factors that lead to winning that I'll kind of start off with is uh, we held our opponent under 50 points 12 times. And then when we did that, we were 10 and two in those games. So that's a really big factor for our success. And then another big factor for us is we shot more free throws than our opponent in 11 games. And in those 11 games, we went 10-1. and one. We out-rebounded our opponents in 14 games, and we were 10-4 and four when that happened. And then another good factor that we look at each game is we had under 12 turnovers in 10 games, and we were 9-1 and one in those 10 games. And another factor that we did pretty well on this year was we forced more than 15 turnovers in 16 games. And we went 11 and five in those 16 games. And I think a few of those losses can be attributed to, we didn't hold up our end of the bargain and take care of the ball because in four of those games, we also had more than 15 turnovers. But we did pretty well on those five statistical categories that are a pretty good factor or viewpoints into whether or not you won the game. Excellent. You set uh, specific goals, and my goodness, when you accomplish those goals, you did real well. Yeah, exactly. If if we can clean up a few things and get to the free throw line a little bit more, I think that's a really big factor for us was when we can get to that free throw line a lot and knock them down, it, it makes it tough for that opposing team to leave on top. And some of the losses that you had, they were close games, so were maybe some missed free throws, the difference in those? Big time. Yeah, but we had a lot of close games. I think really our only game that got more than 12-point difference was against St. Thomas Moore, and they were kind of doing that to everybody in the state. So some of those close losses, our free throw percentage wasn't where our goal wanted it to be, and that you could point to that in a lot of those games of not being the only factor of why we lost those games but they were they were a big part of it who were some of the players you really relied on this year Uh, we had a great senior class kelby olson was black hills all conference he was in the running for all state didn't get that nod but i thought he was right up there with a lot of those players that were on the second and third team Uh, he averaged 17.8 points a game uh, six rebounds a game and then he had 2.6 steals a game. And Kelby also passed the 1,000-point mark for his career at Belfouche High School. Wow. And in talking to people, we can't really track down any hard data of anybody post-1985 that has done that. So I'm going to do some digging in this free time that we have to see if I can get some hard data on anybody before that time. But as of right now, he's the only one that's broken that milestone for Belfouche High School. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And then also we had Colby Noah Jeske, who was a great leader for us, did a lot of good things on the floor for us. He was very multidimensional. He averaged 9.7 points a game, pulled down 5.2 rebounds, and then he had 82 assists over the season for an average of 3.9 assists. So did a great job of distributing the ball for us and was a really big factor in some of those big wins for us, played big in those big moments. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tate Larson was another senior for us who averaged 7.7 points a game. He knocked down 25 threes throughout the season. And then we also had Keaton Benson and Jackson Tyndall come off the bench for us and see as seniors And they really gave us some good energy, some defensive pressure, and really did a lot of the little things for us throughout the year. So that's that's a good good view of our senior class and what they did for us this year. 
Um, we had a few underclassmen that got some good minutes. Aiden Giffen started every game except for senior night for us as a sophomore. He had a big year, and we're looking for big things for, from him for the next couple of years. He averaged 9.4 points a game, uh, nearly seven rebounds a game, and he was averaging one block per game as well. So pretty, pretty productive for a sophomore year. We expect that production to really jump up with the vacancy that the senior class leaves and him stepping up into that role. Um, another person that we had starting for us was junior Brexton Garza. He ended up starting at point guard midway through the season and kind of took over that role for us. Had some really big games. He played really well against Bowman County in late January. And we ended up coming away with a 12-point win, but it was a much closer game throughout that. He knocked down a few big shots, made a few big layups for us in that game. And then also Logan Goders as a junior gave us some good minutes inside off of the bench. And Lan Fuhr gave us some good minutes as a junior on the wing, really long and athletic and excited to see what those guys do as seniors next year. Yeah, it's nice knowing that you got a good team coming back next year, especially with some great seniors graduating. Yeah, it's, you know, when when you have five seniors that play a, a good chunk of minutes and get a lot of production, it's it's kind of when, as a coach, you're looking down the pipeline and seeing, well, what do we have coming back and what are we going to need to get better at? There are some things that we're going to need to figure out of kind of who's going to handle the ball and be a playmaker for us. But I think we have some capable players in Brexton Garza and Lan Fuhr. We also have some youngsters that didn't get major varsity minutes, but I think they'll be ready to go next year. Uh, Gage Crot was a junior for us, and I think he, he's got some juice to him at the guard position. Uh, Riker Otis and Gabe Heck were both sophomores, and they're very skilled sophomores. And Riker Otis keeps growing. He's he's about 6'3 now. So if we could get a couple more inches on him, we, we could have a nice inside presence with a, with a guy that can shoot the lights out as well. And then we had a freshman that suited up varsity for us and got into 10 games, and Anthony Budmeyer. And he's very skilled, passionate young man. So we need to replace a lot of production. But we have capable individuals that it's tricky right now with uh, all of the COVID-19 social distancing going on. But the boys coming back are ready and willing to work. And I'm sure they're putting in their time in individually. Clay, this season ended with a lot of positives. You won six of your last nine, including the last game against Sturgis in the regular season. And then you went into the playoffs. Yeah, we finished on a pretty good run uh, the past few years. We've kind of limped to the end and had some losses that we didn't necessarily want. But this year, I thought we finished pretty strong. Um, losing to Custer before that Sturgis game was a big loss, and it was a tough game. But yeah, I thought we finished the regular season well. Um, beating Sturgis at Sturgis was a big win for us and gave us some confidence going into the playoffs. And then we had a long break because we were supposed to play St. Thomas Moore the week after Sturgis, mm -hmm. but that got canceled because of snow. So we had about a 15-day break from our Sturgis game to our first round of the regions. Mm -hmm. So we, we lost a little bit of rhythm and had a little bit of rust in that first quarter. Hill City had a great game plan, and they were ready to come try and knock us off, and they were playing very well in the first half. But then we kind of exploded in that second half and ended up winning 79 to 40. I think at one point, I can't remember, I forgot to look this up, but I think we went on a 29 to 4 run in that third and fourth quarter to really stretch that lead. So we played with some great rhythm and confidence in that second half. And then we played in a really fun competitive basketball game down in Custer in the region semis. Uh, ended up losing 57 to 64. It was a little closer than that. We fouled a couple times in the last 20 seconds, and they knocked down both of their free throws. But it was it was a three-point game with 45, 55 seconds left, and we couldn't get it done all the way. But, man, looking back on it, that's, that's a game that the boys will remember and the environment that they were in. Yes, it didn't go their way, but I look back on, on my playing days and, even some of the losses, just playing in those types of environments, 
where the town is so passionate about basketball, Custer is, and just the atmosphere that those boys were able to play in. And it was that second half, it was back and forth. Both teams were making plays and making shots. It was just a, a really fun uh, Region 8A basketball game. No kidding. Sounds like it was a great season for you guys. And, of course, great fan support in Belfast, too. Yes, yeah. We, you know, that atmosphere, yes, Custer, Custer brings it every time we go down there. But we had our visitor section packed to the brim, and we even didn't have space for everybody. So we had some people standing on the baseline, and they were, they were just as loud and supportive as that Custer crew was. Assuming everything goes okay with this COVID-19, if we can get past that, to uh, got some off-season camps and things like that coming up. Uh, yeah, we're we're you know we're kind of up in the air with that, but um, we 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 usually go to a Black Hill State camp in mid June. We have been going down to a camp at University of Northern Colorado in early June, and as that's going and traveling out of town with all of this uncertainty. As big of a bummer for me to say is um, I don't know if that's going to be in the cards this summer, but we're hoping a few of those local camps later in June and maybe in July, we go, we usually go to a camp at South Dakota School of Mines. We're hoping, we're hoping some of this stuff calms down and we're able to get back to a little bit of normalcy to give these young bucks some court time to play together and figure out their roles and our team identity. Clay Potter, Belfouche High School head boys basketball coach. Clay, it's nice to take a moment here and visit with you about Belfouche High School basketball. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Thanks for the call. Yep. Okay. Great season, coach. Thank you very much. Have a good one. 